Hi, uh, welcome to another SEO Hangout with Josh Wyshynski. Say more. Uh, today I've got a very special SEO Hangout for you. A rant. A giant big rant with a PowerPoint. So get ready, because I'm going to rant about SEO. And what SEO is in 2016, and what SEO is not in 2016. Um, there's still a lot of confusion out there about what SEO is and what it's not, and how to do SEO uh, projects, and how to hire the best SEO contractor, uh, how to plan the best SEO campaign. Uh, and so, as a public service to you, my fine viewers, I'm going to rant. And the rant is a little ranty, so I'll warn you now, there's some rantage that will occur. Uh, but it's very informative, it'll be very useful for you, especially if you're new in this industry. Uh, and it's, it's updated and relevant to 2016 and beyond, and definitely not yesterday's tactics. So without further ado, let's look at the PowerPoint. Okay, so here's what I want to talk about. It's SEO in 2016. Um, it's not 2008 anymore. On a daily basis, I get tweets, I get emails from people asking questions, and that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. And anyone who wants to find out how SEO is working these days, it's perfectly fine to ask questions and find out. But making assumptions uh, or reading articles that are 10 years old or reading articles that are five years old or listening to people who do not care about risk mitigation the way I do or the way the good SEOs do is, is the problem. So I want to talk about SEO in 2016, what it is and what it is not. So this will be a crash course for you. What SEO is in 2016 and what SEO is not in 2016. So the first thing is, SEO is not what you think it is. <laughs> I mean, obviously not. If you knew what it is, you wouldn't be watching this or you wouldn't be asking me questions. Um, SEO is different than what you think. As I said, it's not 2008 anymore. SEO is not set it and forget it. It's not tactical. It's not really about sitemaps or crawling or links. That's right. I said SEO is not really about sitemaps. Not really. It has really little to do with crawling. You can't really affect that. It doesn't really matter. And it's not really about links or buying links or getting links or the best links. It really is not. That's done. That's done. D-U-N done. SEO is technical. You have to worry about your speed, your URL structure, your silo structures, good writing on your page that's descriptive about the topic. SEO is about user experience. It's about your user interface, about good design. This is directly tracked and rendered by Google. SEO is about marketing in 2016. It's about what I call buzz generation. You want to generate buzz about you. Whether that generates links or not does not matter. That's ancillary to the importance of just generally getting the buzz out there for yourself on various social networks for the most part, including blogs and things like that. So SEO is more about jumping through Google's hoops and making it easier for them. Remember, SEO is about making it easier for Google to crawl you, to understand you, to be faster, so they like you better. And Search Console is necessary for this. Search Console is what Webmaster Tools used to be called. Search Console is necessary for this. And here's something that most people don't appreciate. Most SEO is done before the site is even made. In choosing your marketing strategies, and the prices of your products, for example, and the niches you want to compete in, it has very little to do about choosing your keywords. Yes, keyword research is still important for SEO, but it's much more important. What business do you want to have? What do you want to sell? <laughs> Who are your competitors? Are you going to try and compete against Walmart? That would be a bad idea. <laughs> SEO is as much, if not more, about analysis and diagnostics and marketing as it is internal website changes or external website posting. So here's another thing that people are not appreciating. It's not, you can't just outsource SEO to some person in the Philippines, no offense to people who live in the Philippines, who barely speaks English, who are just going to do some posting for you. That's not SEO, or at least that's not the SEO you want anymore. SEO is as much, if not more, about analysis of your traffic in your website and diagnostics of your traffic in your website and your sales and your conversions and marketing you, just good old marketing, commercials, ads, getting you out there, getting you in front of people's faces, incentives, sales, uh, contests, things like that. It is as much about that, SEO is, as it is internal website changes of whatever sort at all, or external website posting. And here's something I, I can't stress enough. If there is a warrior forum or a black hat, uh, black hat forum, black hat world post on it, or someone is selling some kind of miracle product 
ask why. If they can make millions doing this, then ask yourself, why the fuck are they selling it to you? If they can make millions of dollars doing this special product or a special trick, online trick or a special kind of scheme, then they would never sell it to anybody else, otherwise they'd have competition, right? So I wouldn't believe in any kind of get-rich-quick scheme. Um, and, and remember, if they've been doing this special product or this special scheme, if they've been doing it since 2008, and, 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 and or lots of people know about it, then this is old news. This is last year's tactics that you don't want to be doing anyway. The more popular they are on Warrior Forum or on Blackout World, the more likely Google is on to this kind of tactic. Last year's tactics do not work long term and are increasingly expensive and risky. You want to exploit the new algorithms that Google is writing. You want to find somebody who knows about these new algorithms because these new algorithms have less security built in because they've been untested. Here's another little nugget I would like to tell people about. Blogging is not good for SEO. I know this might come as a shock to some. And again, I do not mean to offend anybody who is listening to this video, to this rant. I warned you it was a rant. I'm not, I don't mean to offend anybody. If you run afoul of any of these things I'm saying here, I will not be angry at you in any way. Please, by all means, I'd love to help you further. But people, <laughs> blogging is not good for SEO. This tactic is no longer viable with less than, say, at least $2,000 a month for content. If you're not willing to spend at least $2,000 a month, or you know, around there, $1,000, $3,000 a month for your articles, and I mean like one or two articles, like really holy crap good articles, like they, com they compete and compare with Wired Magazine. If you're not willing to do that, then do not bother. You can no longer just throw articles at it and hope they rank. Why would Google ever rank that? They know of 40 trillion web pages. I repeat, Google is aware of 40 trillion web pages. Why in the world would they ever care about your new blog with your new articles? Besides, most users don't like reading long blogs, not especially if they are lower in the sales funnel, if they just want to make a purchase. Google will always serve the site dedicated to sales. The entire site that is dedicated to selling product XYZ, Google will always rank that higher for sales-based queries if they can tell the user wants to make a sale, probably a brand that, other, that the users are also searching for, searching the brand name of, they will always rank that higher than your information slash sales site. So if you have a site that, I don't know, sells car fenders or car parts and also has a blog about cars, eh, done, that's done. That was done in 2010. Panda was made explicitly to kill sites like that. Let me guess, you're not ranking. You know, are you having ranking problems or the rankings are going up and down? You know why? Because you're blogging. You're wasting your money, you're wasting your time, and you are killing yourself. You're killing your business. Here's another one. Ads don't make web pages better. <laughs> and ads are not trivial to Google. I know that it is uh, your, the revenue model for some people listening to this. I'm sorry, it's just not 2004 anymore. Google wants all the ad revenue. They do not want to share any with you. And Google search, because they're a little guilty about working for Google and making money, they don't even want to let AdSense site rank very much anymore. So Google search is biased against ads on your page. Make no mistake, if your ads bother the user, if they pop up, if they're interstitial, they have to click past them, click through them, click around them, you are going to have ranking problems. I guarantee you. That is a fact. Google is also biased against affiliates as well, of course. Of course they are. Anyone who's run affiliate sites for a while or knows any affiliates will know this to be true, even though Google denies it, which I'll talk about Google in a second. Here's another thing. You can't rank for anything you want. <laughs> I mean, you can. If you become as big as Walmart, then yes, you can outrank Walmart. So, no, you can't rank for anything you want. You can't become as big as Walmart. You might be able to become as big as some other brands, and you might be already as big as some other brands. Good, okay, then you have a fighting chance. But please, 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 for the love of sweet Buddha, for the love of the great spaghetti monster, 
Do not think that you can just rank for anything that you please. It doesn't work that way anymore. I mean, you can. There is no, there is no direct bias in Google's algorithms like we must rank Walmart ahead or we must rank Wikipedia ahead. Although uh, the debate for Wikipedia is out. That very well could be a direct bias. But it, they like to make everything and they continuously like to make everything. And, and everything they've said for as long as I've known them, as long as they've been around, they like to make algorithms that are impartial in the sense that if it has the statistical percentages to rank, then it will. And then they just slap those rules to make sure the brands are always ranking higher. And Google likes it that way. They have directly admitted this. Various employees, all the way up to Eric Schmidt, their former CEO, have admitted point blank, verbatim, brands are the solution, not the problem. So here's the thing that I get. People, I get a lot of clients come to me. I, I do... I do SEO audits of hundreds of sites a year. And everyone still assumes tricking Google is easy or the best strategy or the de facto standard strategy moving forward. They say things, well, if we just make some links, dot, 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 this is the wrong strategy. This is the wrong way to think about it. This is the outdated way to think about it. This is the way to think about it that will kill your business and hurt your business and also make me angry, <laughs> so, which is the complete reason why I'm making this, this rant. Tricking Google is not easy, nor the strategy you should necessarily be taking moving forward. It shouldn't be the de facto standard strategy. It was in 2007, I'll fully admit, tricking Google is what you wanted to do. You wanted to buy links with exact match anchor text. That's what everybody did. That's what Google knew it. They knew it. Everyone knew it. Get over it. It's not 2007 anymore. That tactic does not work anymore at all, period. Anyone who claims they're still having success with this is lying or wrong, they don't understand, or they're just very, very lucky. So you do not want to take the tactics that the 0.1% are taking and maybe succeeding and are getting increasingly risky and are going to nail them very shortly. So I would suggest do not make your strategy against the Google grain. At the very least, do not just assume that should be your de facto strategy. Instead of faking quality, how about you just make it quality, right? Instead of faking popularity, how about you actually become popular? Hey, you'll make more sales and you'll have other sales channels as well, like Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest or whatever. Ranking is easy when you give Google what they want. They want to see you're the most popular thing. They want to see you're the site. You are the site for X, Y, Z. They want to see that. And they can track it in numerous ways, directly and indirectly. Here's another thing. Design matters, fucktards. <laughs> I'm sorry. But yes, web design is part of SEO. It is a direct part of SEO. Design is as important, if not more important, than links for SEO. Yes, I just said that. Design is as important, if not more important, than links for SEO in 2016 and 2016 moving forward. Your design, did you know that your design is actually rendered by Google before they index it, or during indexing? They crawl it and they process the design. Google also knows what users click on your page through the safe browse mechanism. And that's not only in Chrome, that's also in Firefox and Safari as well, both on the desktop and on mobile. They know what you click, they know, they know how long it took you to click it, and they know if you stopped clicking, meaning you bounced, you left, or you exited. They can make educated guesses there based on how well that, that website is doing. And I know people in the Black Hat community who have literally put packet sniffers on their browsers are on their computers and watched every click sending packets to Google to their Safe Browse API because Google runs the Safe Browse for all these other browsers as well. So that's why uh, Andre Lepatsev, who is a senior search quality analyst at Google working at the Dublin office, recently emailed me personally because I asked him some questions and he explained to me that yes, we do not need Google Analytics to see what people are doing. We know the entire life of the query, quote unquote on the desktop side, and we're learning it on the mobile side. He's also said that publicly as well. I will give you the reference if you like. So design directly matters for conversions and bounces. And I'm sorry, the only reason why people resist me here is because they just don't want to go change their design because they're not friends with their designer anymore or their designer costs them a lot of money or because getting a website design can sometimes be a very stressful experience and they just have the psychological baggage. They don't want to go back into that. I fully understand. I appreciate that, I empathize with that, but I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. You might have to change your design if it's not good enough. Quite frankly, 
Why did you ever think otherwise? Why did you think your design from 1998 was going to be sufficient in 2016? Or even your design from 2011 was going to be sufficient in 2016? Or why did you think that your, essentially your website's like a magazine, why did you think that your magazine that looks worse than your competitor was ever going to outrank them? Because I have more links. It doesn't work that way anymore. So, you might have to change your design, and hey, newsflash, you will only increase your sales and your prestige and your, your branding if you do. It's a win-win-win. So when I tell you you need to upgrade your design, yes, you need to effing upgrade your design. Oh, here's another one. Google lies. <laughs> newsflash, Google lies. Don't ask a Google employee in public whether XYZ is a ranking factor. He will deny it. He has to deny it. Otherwise, he will get fired. Don't go ask poor John Mueller on continuous hangouts or when I tweet out something I'm trying to give you guys in secret, go tweet John Mueller and ask him if it's the case. Because he will deny it and then he'll stop telling me things. That would be bad for you. It wouldn't be bad for me. I have plenty of Google contacts. But it would be bad for you, anyone who listens to my videos. So remember guys, he does public relations. Every, every Google employee who speaks publicly does public relations, or they have a PR guy there with him. Except for Miley Oye. She's kind of like a liaison, but she's, she's old school. At any rate, um, don't ask him directly. He will deny it. If you ask him it's a ranking factor, he will deny it. Also, don't ask him if XYZ is a problem or not, because he will likely downplay it, unless it is, of course, one of their well-known no-nos, like, is it a problem if I buy links? He will say, yes, that's a problem. Is it a problem if I don't have any keywords on my page? He will say, yes, that's a problem. Because those are the published things they've already said. Any published things like pre-2012 they've already admitted, yes, he will, he will admit it. But anything post-2012 that they're doing, he will not admit. So you, you, you can't get him to confirm it. So don't think if you go on there and ask him if XYZ is a ranking factor and he says no, that therefore that's the truth. So please, 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 by all means, any kind of, is it okay if I dot dot dot, or do you use XYZ as a ranking factor dot 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 kind of questions are idiotic. They are, I'm sorry to put it so bluntly, they are idiotic. They are a waste of time. Stop asking them. Google will only confirm what everyone already knows. They will deny everything else. So if you ask him a direct, is this a ranking factor question, he will deny it. If you ask him, is this a problem if my site does this, he will probably say, no, it's not a problem, nothing's a problem, Google's great. That will be his answer every single time. Even worse, <laughs> and here comes even rantier rants, even worse, stop, please, 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 stop coming to me and saying, John Mueller said blah, blah, blah. Quite frankly, you are not qualified to interpret what John Mueller's statements, okay? I know that probably sounds very rude, but you are not qualified to interpret John Mueller's statements. Do this. Do a PhD in philosophy. Do SEO for 16 years. Be both also a web designer and a programmer. I program, I've programmed in C and JavaScript and a system administrator. I used to teach Unix, Unix uh, web server administration courses. Listen to every single John Mueller hangout he has ever put out, every single, every single one since 2012, and have read and watched every other single Google publication or video that Matt Cutts or Miley Oye or Gary Ilyish or whomever else from the web spam team has put out, etc., etc. Have private talks with them at numerous conferences where they leak numerous things to you. Have emails with them back and forth where they leak numerous things to you. And then come back to me and tell me what Google said. Then at that point, you'll be an industry leader, like I am. And then at that point, you will have some credibility to your statement when you're interpreting what Google says. So, this is kind of like arguing with your doctor about something you read on WebMD. Well, WebMD says this, you know, <laughs> so with all the arrogance that a, a, a medical doctor usually has, I'm saying this with that much humility and arrogance. I've studied this for a very, very, very long time. Maybe you have too. Great, by all means. But I, this is my career. This is what I do. This is what I do for a living. So it's very difficult to interpret what they say. So trust me, there's some finesse that is required. And please remember this. Google is not your friend. I'm your friend. I'm trying to rank you. Google is not trying to rank you, right? When you go to John Mueller with a problem, he doesn't give two shits whether your, site's, your site ranks or not. 
In fact, he'd probably like to clear you out of there because they have 40 trillion pages to sort and handle and deal with. I'm your friend. I'm trying to rank you. I'm trying to give you free advice so you don't run afoul of the Google monster, which is basically my enemy. I'm trying to help you rank and help you do well, especially if you hire me, because that's what you hired me to do. Remember, Google is always trying to obfuscate and protect themselves. Google's uh, public outreach is nothing but uh, uh, risk mitigation. They're just trying to mitigate their risk and maintain their image. Google only cares about making money and protecting the internet according to their own biases. So helping you is not their mission. A fair web is not their mission. So please stop treating John Mueller like he's your friend. You can be friendly with him, as I am, but he's not your friend. You guys are working on opposite sides of the fence. And finally, a little word about SEO contracts. Here's something I like to say about SEO contracts, my fine friends. They do not work well with a pay only on page one agreement. Back in 2007, they worked great with a, I'll only pay you when you get me to page one or to spot one agreement. Because that was something you could predict fairly easily was gonna happen if you bought the right links and did it enough and had the right keywords on your page. It is not that simple anymore. It is far more complex. They have fail safes built in, so that, that process does no longer work. I don't even know if anybody out there is even still, I haven't had someone probably for about a year ask me for a pay only on page one agreement, but I used to get it quite a lot. And keep in mind, if anyone takes that pay on page one agreement, then either they don't have the experience or the talent to command paying jobs, as, as I do, I demand payment up front, or they likely have to do like 50 of those kind of contracts at once. And they, they therefore, they just simply cannot give you the, the attention or the diagnostics that you need and they will also try risky tactics, the kind of set it and forget it automatic uh, ma uh, uh, machine based tactics and see what sticks. Yours probably won't. And finally, Google's algorithms are no longer, as I said, structured in a way that this is the best way to do it. it is just not set it and forget it linking anymore. Don't forget this about SEO contracts. You get what you pay for. Quite frankly, anything less than $500 per month is likely, likely not going to help you at all. Because SEO is skilled labor. The barrier to entry to understanding SEO has gone from like a grade 7 level education to at least a master's level education. Trust me, I know. I've done a master's and I was doing a PhD. That's the, complex, the level of complexity it's at, in my opinion. If they are not skilled, if they can't command that much money, you really don't want them to do anything on your site or for your SEO. And here's my final rant, fairly arrogant. Quite frankly, please do not come and tell me what to do for your SEO. I tell you what you need to do for your SEO. That's like going to your medical doctor and telling them what, what drug you want them to prescribe. The medical doctor tells you what drug you should be taking and what drug you should be not with, hopefully, a more reasoned view of the entirety of your, of your situation. So too with your SEO expert. I am an expert in this. I spend all fucking day learning this shit and verifying it and speaking with Google and researching it eight hours a bloody day. I do this for a living. I am graduate school educated. I have a TED talk. I have an IQ of about 140. I regularly pass Mensa tests. I've been doing this since before Google was around. If you knew how to rank, you would be. <laughs> you wouldn't need to come to me. Otherwise, you wouldn't need me in the equation. But you don't know how to rank, so that's why you're coming to me. So please do not come to me and tell me what to do for your SEO. I will tell you what you need to do, and that would be the best thing for you to do is to listen. Because for the SEOs that are worth their salt, the biggest value add for SEOs that are worth their salt is in their knowledge and strategic consultation. SEO uh, consultants are not really SEO consultants. They're marketing consultants with a special eye to how the Google thinks. So that's the biggest value add for your SEO consultant is through knowledge and strategic consultation. Not in being an employee that listens to you and does what you say. Because again, if you knew how to rank, then you'd be ranking already. It's not, the, the biggest value add in your SEO uh, contractor is not in tweaking your title tags or building your links or, you know, or whatever, or going on social media and doing little, little posts for you. Don't get me wrong, you have to do all those things and they're important, 
But that's not their biggest value add. The biggest value add is in advising you how you should be structuring your business, especially in ways that will help you for, for internet marketing and will help you for Google marketing. So, yes, I'm sorry that your design team now needs to be involved, and that you might need to change your business strategy or your prices. But quite frankly, why did you think this would never be required? Why did you think that ranking in Google would be like it is in 2008 when everyone, everyone is saying it has changed? So with that, that is my rant for SEO in 2016. I will take off my rant hat now uh, and, <laughs> and let you off the hook from my rant. But quite frankly, these are the kinds of questions I get all the time. You are doing yourself a disservice. It's no skin off my butt if your site's not ranking, theoretically, unless you're my client, in which case it is skin off my butt, <laughs> literally, <laughs> or figuratively literally. Um, but it's not, so it's not my issue if you don't understand how this works now. It is, of course, my job once you hire me to explain to you how it works. Hopefully, this will give amusement to some people who work in the industry and know how this works. But it would be really good if people could kind of understand how strategically SEO has changed, and it will help people to understand how strategically SEO has changed. So as I said, Google is not your friend. I'm your friend. I'm that friend who says stuff to you you don't like. <laughs> it might piss you off a bit. So that means I'm a good friend. Uh, especially uh, as long as what I'm saying is for your own best interest. And trust me, for SEO in 2016, what I said in this rant is for your own best interest. So with that, I will bid you adieu. If you have any SEO questions at all, please, by all means, contact me at joshpachinski at gmail.com. You can follow me on, at, on Twitter for more rants like this at, uh, at Josh Pashinsky. And you can see more videos uh, like this, including experiments, Google leaks uh, from exotic Googlers, uh, and all full courses on how to do SEO at youtube.com slash jbachins. That's J-B-A-C-H-Y-S. So with that, I'll uh, bid you good night, and I hope you enjoyed the rant. And yes, design is part of SEO. Stop saying it's not. And as always, good luck in the SERPs. Matt!